Before I begin the tutorial, I'd just like to apologise for this very unpleasant blue line that appears on my screen. It's a column of dead pixels, and there's nothing I can do about it unless I buy a new monitor. Hi, welcome to this short tutorial on conversion to black and white using Lightroom, Photoshop CC and Silver Effects Pro. To begin with, we'll load up a graphic which shows us the eight colours you can work with in Lightroom. To actually convert to black and white is very easy. You'll notice this panel here called HSL, Colour and B&W. Just click B&W. The panel opens up and the image has immediately been converted to black and white. Lightroom does this using an automatic algorithm which is its best guess for what you might want. However, you have a great degree of control over how each colour is rendered. For instance, let's look at the green bar here and the green title. If I move the green slider to the left, it will get darker. All the way and it gets black. If I move it to the right, it will get lighter. And you can drop it in at any point along this line. Let's now have a look at blue and we'll do exactly the same. To the left it gets darker, to the right it gets lighter. It's often a good idea to push the sliders all the way along to either end and that lets you see the full extent of what's happening. Let's now look at the orange. And you'll notice that the red is also affected. So you need to be aware that each of these sliders will affect the colours surrounding it to some extent too. Obviously this is fairly straightforward in an image like this. With a full colour photographic image, it's a little bit more complex. So, let's work with a full colour photographic image now. Here's an original RAW file, no editing whatsoever. It's a bit muddy, some areas are a bit overexposed. Let's see what we can do with it. My usual starting point is to edit the picture in full colour first of all. Rather than going through these basic edits, Here's one I did earlier, and th this image has been edited using all the usual controls. You'll notice a couple of white areas here and there. I had to bend the picture rather a lot to straighten things up. We'll fix that later. So let's do our black and white conversion. Simply click BW, there it is. Click Auto, and Lightroom will give it its best guess. So we can now begin to edit. I usually work down the sliders top to bottom. Let's take red first, go right along this way, right along that way. Nothing much red in the picture. There's a little bollard down here if you look at that. As I slide to the left it gets darker, as I slide to the right it gets lighter. So let's make it light so it blends in a bit with the car. The orange is having quite an effect in the building in the centre of the image. So let's just pull it back a bit and make it a little darker. Yellow tends to have quite an impact on many photographs and there we can see we'll leave that a little bit more too. Green is really just affecting areas of the central building so let's lighten them up. Shove green all the way along to 100. Aqua Aqua is having an effect in the building on the right of the picture so let's pull that one all the way down to give some more detail in there. Blue will affect the sky. And I can make it very bright, or I can make it very dark. Somewhere in between is probably the best result. There we go. Purple often doesn't have a great impact on your picture, and this is a good example of one. Very little difference wherever the purple slider is. Likewise, magenta. Nothing much happening there, so we'll just leave it roughly in the middle. And that's it. Our black and white conversion is complete. Of course, you can now go back in to your basic panel and make any other changes that you wish. Now let's have a look at conversion to black and white using Photoshop CC. I've loaded in the same image after it was uh, edited using Lightroom. You'll notice that the white areas have vanished now because I used Content Aware Fill to remove these. 
And for those who don't know, this is what Content Aware Fill looks like. So, anyway, back to black and white conversion. To do this, I'll add what's called an adjustment layer. And in the dialog that it offers you, one of the options is black and white. And you're presented with a very similar dialog to Lightroom. And we also have an auto button, which gives you Photoshop's best guess at the conversion. We have the same kinds of sliders, but you'll notice there are only six of them this time. So Photoshop is more of a blunt instrument than Lightroom is in this case. The reds won't affect terribly much, as we already know, but that bollard will just ease them up a little bit so it blends into the car. The yellows, we use them to open up the building a little bit, the centre building. Greens similarly. And again, if you slide the sliders all the way from one end to the other, you'll see the areas that you're affecting much more easily. And we'll open the greens all the way. In Photoshop, cyan's going to have more impact on the sky. So we can make the sky really bright, or we can make it a bit darker. And we'll make it a bit darker. That will do. Blues will affect the sky enormously. We can make a very black sky, very white sky. But in this case, we'll leave it about there. Leave some detail in this cloud area here and over here. The magentas won't do very much at all, so we'll just leave them in the middle. And there we have it, a conversion using Photoshop. And again, if we look, here's what a, an adjustment layer does. It adds an invisible layer above the main image. What it means is that if I turn this layer off, we still have the color image we haven't changed any pixels on the original image. Anyway, here's one I did earlier. That's a Photoshop edit done before. We can compare that now to the Lightroom edit because I've imported the Lightroom image into here too. So there's Lightroom, there's Photoshop, more or less the same Lightroom again. And you'll notice in Lightroom I've removed these areas too. However, there is another way to operate this, and it's using Silver Effects Pro, and we'll have a look at that next. We'll begin with exactly the same image, edited and imported from Lightroom. We'll go to the Filter menu, down in it Collection, choose Silver Effects Pro. It'll wear away for a minute or two. I prefer to use Silver Effects Pro within Photoshop because it creates new layers. Now, when most people begin with Silver Effects Pro, they generally click through the presets until they get one that they quite like, or the closest match to what they quite like. I prefer to work by using a neutral conversion. This converts to black and white and gives you a fairly flat, even result. The real power of Silver Effects Pro lies within the global adjustments. You have three, brightness, contrast, and structure. And you have main controls for these, and clearly, as you move to the right, it gets brighter. As you move to the left, it gets darker. And uh, I usually don't mess with brightness very much. But in this case, we do want to boost the highlights a little open up the mid-tones also just by quite a small amount and open up the shadows a little too. The controllers within these give you much more fine tuning than just using the overall brightness slider. Dynamic brightness, you'll see what happens there as we move along, move back and again we'll leave that pretty much in the middle. If you double click on any of these it goes back to zero. The second group is contrast. We can amplify whites, blacks, or apply soft contrast. So let's amplify the whites a little. Amplify the blacks, which makes the blacks blacker. And if you slide soft contrast around, you'll see what it does. Overall darkens, overall lightens. And again, this throws up something that happens in Silver Effects Pro. Very nasty area of halo up here. You have to be very careful with that. So we just pull that back until it vanishes. There we go. That'll do us. And finally, we have structure. 
Structure is the most powerful tool, I think, within SilverFX Pro. We'll turn up the overall structure, which gives much more definition, to 37%. Highlights, we can boost the highlights and notice the sky. It's softer, but it's more definition. Similarly, with mid-tones, we can pull them all the way up, all the way back. And you can see it really does make quite a difference. And we'll pull them up a little bit too. Shadows, not so worried about. So we'll just leave them more or less in the middle. And fine structure, just gives some overall extra detail. And there we go. Conversion using Silver Effects Pro. We'll come down here to OK and it will apply that change. And again, you'll see that it's creating a new layer within Photoshop. So our original image, we haven't altered any pixels at all. And there we have it, the black and white conversion. And there's one I did earlier. So, conversion using Silver FX Pro. We also, of course, did a conversion using Lightroom, and that's the Lightroom conversion, and using Photoshop. There's the Photoshop conversion, Lightroom conversion, and finally, SilverFX Pro conversion.